Hi. The internet is absolutely full of tips from famous writers. But you know what? Some of those are really great, really helpful, and some of them are just stupid. So we're going to look at what I think are 10 really great writing tips that you can take away make your book better straight away, but we're going to look at 10 terrible tips as well from some really great writers. I'm Harry Bingham for Jericho Writers and let's jump straight in. Okay, great tip number 10. We're going to work up to the top. Great tip number 10, Sinclair Lewis, the art of writing is the art of applying the seat of the pants to the seat of the chair. And this is the most basic writing tip of them all. If you don't sit at your desk and write, you're not being a writer. You're thinking about a book is not writing a book. You need to sit and work your ideas out on the page. That is the heart of all writing. If you're not doing that, you're not going to make it as a writer. Terrible tip number 10. Again, we're going to work our way to the top. Annie Prue, I love her as a writer. But she says, proceed slowly and take care. To ensure that you proceed slowly, write by hand. What rubbish! If you like writing on a computer, write on a computer. Don't be bossed about just because Annie Prue says you need to write by hand. She likes writing by hand. You write whatever way you want to write. If that's crayon on the wall, you write in crayon on the wall. Great tip number nine. Chuck Wendig. Stories are like wine. They need time. So take the time. This isn't a hot dog eating contest. You're not being judged on how much you write, but rather how well you do it. And again, it's such a basic tip here. Quality counts. And in the end, a really successful book is one that lingers forever in the reader's memory. And that's the book that you want to write. So don't force yourself to hit deadlines that are unrealistic. Care about quality. You'll speed up the more experience you have. But for now, just focus on quality. Great tip. Terrible tip number nine, Stephen King. The road to hell is paved with adverbs. Well, maybe. Except, hold on, maybe is an adverb. Hmm, so possibly. No, possibly is an adverb. There are millions of adverbs that are absolutely fine. What he means is, don't have things like, he spluttered indignantly all the time. And he's right about that, but absolutely feel free to use adverbs. They are totally fine. They're part of the language that we all use. Great tip number eight, Hilary Mantel. Love Hilary Mantel. Description must work for its place. It can't be simply ornamental. It usually works best if it has a human element. If description is coloured by the viewpoint of the character who's doing the noticing, it becomes, in effect, part of the character definition and part of the action. And again, that's absolutely great. If your descriptions are really character-centred and really focused on the stage you are at in the story, they are never in the way, they are never surplus, they are just a brilliant part of the story you are writing. Great tip. Terrible tip number eight, Maya Angelou. Again, great writer, she's got a Nobel Prize, I think. There is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. Really? What about having your fingernails pulled out by the Gestapo? I'm going to say that is a bigger agony. So don't get all cutesy about your game. We're writers, we like being a writer, but having an untold story inside you? No, there are bigger agonies than that, I'm afraid. Great tip number seven, Jane Smiley. This is a really good one. Every first draft is perfect because all a first draft has to do is exist, okay? I don't care how bad your first draft novel is, it's probably going to be bad. Hemingway once said the first draft of everything is S-H-I-T and he's probably right. All the first draft has to do is exist. Your job then is to edit it into shape. So don't worry too much about the quality of that first draft, just make it exist. Great tip, Jane Smiley, thank you very much. Terrible tip number seven, Agatha Christie. What a ridiculous thing to say. The best time for planning a book is while you're doing the dishes. Well, maybe it is for her, and maybe it's not for you. But don't be bossed around by Agatha Christie. You plan the book when you want to plan the book. That might be walking the dog, it might be doing the dishes, it might be sitting in front of a computer and actually working it out. And of those three, I'd suggest walking the dog uh, is, is quite a good one, but actually sitting at the computer and doing some work, that is even better. Great tip number six, Annie Prue again. Okay, I gave you a terrible tip from Annie Prue before. Here's a great tip. Um, from her, if you get the landscape right, the characters will step out of it and they'll be in the right place. Settings really matter. I think that it's a bit neglected um, by a lot of first-time writers. The stronger your settings are, the more real your characters are, and the characters will start talking to you and acting because you feel them in the real world and the reader will feel them in the real world. So really focus on your settings and think about those in just the same way as you would think about your major characters too. Here's a terrible tip from Ray Bradbury. <laughs> You must write every single day of your life. You must lurk in libraries and climb the stacks like ladders to sniff books like perfumes and wear books like hats upon your crazy heads. 
May you be in love every day for the next 20,000 days and out of that love, remake a world. Well, I quite like the bit about remaking a world and being in love is a nice thing, but don't wear books like hats on your crazy heads, that's an idiot. And if you've got to go and pick up your mother from the airport or you've got to deal with your kids' nativity play, you might not write that day and you haven't lost anything. Look, life comes first, writing comes second. Don't worry about Ray Bradbury. Great tip number five, Anton Chekhov. You've heard this before, and it's a really good one. Don't tell me the moon is shining, show me the glint of light on broken glass. The more detailed and focused you can make your prose, the more real it'll seem. So the, the moon shone, that's, that's a nothing, it's bland, it's generic, but talk about the glint of light on broken glass, and we're instantly there and seeing. There's a kind of magical quality to it. So focus on those details, find those details, and your great writing will grow out of that exploration of the, of the detail. Terrible tip number five, Elmore Leonard. Never open a book with a weather. That tip, and why not? That tip annoyed me so much that when I read it, the next book I wrote, I opened a book with the weather. Um, just to annoy Elmore Leonard. I don't suppose he wrote my book. And I sent it to my um, agent, my editor, and I said, I've just broken Elmore Leonard's rule number six of writing, here it goes. And they, they were absolutely fine with that. If you want to open a book with the weather, open a book with the weather. Great tip number four. Margaret Atwood. I've had books that didn't work out. I just abandoned them. It was depressing, but it wasn't the end of the world. I mean, sometimes you bash yourself against the wall and you get through it, but sometimes the wall is just a wall. And you know, this is an interesting tip. We, we come across writers, uh, Jericho writers, where sometimes they've been working on a manuscript for three or four years and it's just not going right. And you know what? They've learned a massive amount in that writing process, but maybe it's a time to move on from that book and to take all of the wisdom and knowledge and experience they've acquired and plough that into a novel that, that really can succeed. So, uh, you know, I think it's really important to be diligent and persistent and, you know, you've got to knock against the wall to see if you can get away through it, but sometimes you just say, it's not right, move on. Terrible tip number four, when we're getting to our, our top three in a minute, Mark Twain. I often want to criticise Jane Austen, but her books madden me so that I can't conceal my frenzy from the reader, and therefore I have to stop every time I begin. Every time I read Pride and Prejudice, I want to dig her up and beat her over the skull with her own shin bone. Well, that's ridiculous. Pride and Prejudice is a magnificent book. Mark Twain, you're a magnificent writer, but that's an idiotic thing to say. So we don't need to listen to Mark Twain on that. Right, great tip number three, Tom Clancy. Didn't expect him in the top three, did you? Suspense is achieved by information control. What you know, what the reader knows, what the characters know. And that's a great tip because it can really focus your mind. If, you're, if you've got a particular plot problem, thinking about information control and who knows what, it can be a real tool for unlocking that particular problem. So thinking about suspense as a, as a process of information control uh, is, can be a really great device for, for helping you figure out your plot problems. Terrible tip number three, William Faulkner. In writing, you must kill all your darlings. This is so famous, it's such a great line, but it's rubbish. And, you know, if you write something that you think is really good, and other people think it's really good, and you love it, and it's just one of your darlings, don't kill it. It's great. Keep it. The idea that you have to kill your darlings is just not true, okay? Sometimes you have to, mostly you don't, okay? Great tip number two, Franz Kafka. I love this. Don't bend. Don't water it down. Don't try to make it logical. Don't edit your own soul according to the fashion. Rather, follow your most intense obsessions mercilessly. By following your own obsessions, r r like mercilessly, he says, that's going to get you to, to the most individual novel and, and therefore the most original novel, the one that sort of stands out the most. It's, it's not going to be like everything else on the shelf. It's going to be like your book that only you could have written. And out of that kind of real pursuit of your own identity via the novel, great fiction can grow. Terrible tip number two. Oh, Jonathan Franzen. It's doubtful that anyone with an internet connection at his workplace is writing good fiction. Well, Jonathan Franzen, this is my workplace. I have an internet connection and I write good fiction. So what you say is a load of rubbish. And now our top one. Great tip number one. And I'm going to cheat because I'm going to give you two. These are my two favourite writer quotes of all time. Chuck Close is a painter, actually, not a writer. So maybe I'm not cheating. Gore Vidal. He said, style is knowing who you are, what you want to say, and not giving a damn. And I love that quote because... It tells you that it's all about finding your authentic self and putting that, expressing that on the page as, as fully and wholly as you can. And if you do that, you're going to write something that other people are going to want to read. And then Chuck Close, like I say, he's a, he's a painter, but this is a really great, great quote as well. Inspiration is for amateurs. The rest of us just show up and get to work. All the best ideas come out of the process. They come out of the work. 
itself. This is the opposite of Agatha Christie's doing the dishes thing. It's actually, if you sit in front of a computer and hammer out your ideas and you, know, you get into a tangle and you get into a knot and you undo things and you redo things and you try other avenues, that is work and that is how writers actually operate and that is where inspiration comes from. Inspiration isn't a bolt of lightning, it's something that comes out of the process of working things through. And our top terrible tip to end this video, Ernest Hemingway, there is nothing to writing, all you do is sit down at a typewriter and bleed. And again, this is just nonsense. It's, it's writers making themselves feel uh, amazing um, about th their job. It's just a job. We enjoy it. Readers like reading it. Um, you know, if, if you can't enjoy writing, then, then go and do something else. Um, I think that is a rubbish tip, but I've really enjoyed this video. 10 top tips and 10 terrible ones from great writers. I've just got one more tip for you, and that is that we've got some great tools um, for you. And you can get an idea generator that helps you shape the idea for your book, but also you can get all of the slides from this video just from the, the link right underneath now. All the slides from this video and our idea generator tool that will really help you build your ideas to a very solid idea for a book. I'm Harry Bingham for Jericho Writers. Thanks very much indeed for watching. It's been a pleasure.